Hi, I'm JT. <laughs> That's a whatever. That's a, a, the callback to another thing. <laughs> Watch more. So, rings and the ring two. For some reason, guys won the poll. Like <laughs> I was hoping that you know, J Horror Month, we'd start talking like actual Japanese movies. <laughs> And not the sequels to the American remakes, but the things I do for this channel. Because this movie sucks. Like, <laughs> I'll say that right now before I even press play and watch it again. So I don't know if this follows Ringu 2, because I don't remember any of the Ringu sequels, like, well at all. I don't think I've even never seen Ring Spiral, or Ringu Spiral, or Ringu Zero. One or the other. I've seen one... But like I said, I don't remember any of these. So does this movie follow, like, story-wise, the same story to one of the Ringu sequels? I don't remember. I want to say it does. But if it does, <laughs> when I rewatch it soon, it better do it so much better than this. Because this movie is just... It has so many bad things in it, and the CGI is one thing. The CGI is terrible in this movie, and we have the whole scene with this fake CGI deer that it looks so bad. Let's just get this over with. <laughs> Let's talk The Ring 2 from 2005. So we open up here with this kid who, it's killing me where he's from. I want to say one of the Final Destinations, I want to say Final Destination 3, that he played the main guy with Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who is in that movie. It's another thing. Go back, watch. I'm pretty sure it's him with this girl that he brings over to his house and tells her to watch the videotape because his friend, I guess... And he's still talking to this kid? Like, this kid gave him the copy of the tape. The cursed tape from the first movie. And told him to make a copy, otherwise he's going to die. He's still talking to his, his friend, first of all. This is a friend of his still. He tried fucking killing this kid. <laughs> like, yeah, he told him, good for him. But he still picked him and said, here, watch this tape. And make a copy or you're going to die. And he's still talking to him. He tries to get this girl to do the same thing, to watch the tape. He said to his friend that he made a copy. So she goes to watch it. First of all, he leaves the room. It's 10.58. He's got to 11 o'clock p.m. until Samara comes and ghosts the shit out of his ass. He waited till right on the dot, like 10 to 11, to do this. It wasn't the first thing on his list the next morning <laughs> that his friend told him all about this. Like, that's so stupid, too. Like, we start off with just a bunch of stupidity here. None of this makes sense. None of this should happen. None of this should be here. But they needed a sequel fast. <laughs> and they needed Naomi Watts back. Because she's the only, maybe, saving grace of this movie is having Naomi Watts, who... Like I said in the first video for the ring, the the ring, <laughs> just the ring, she's phenomenal in everything. But this guy waits until minutes, come on, for this girl to watch this. I mean, can you say maybe he tried a few times in the week before? Doesn't sound like it. <laughs> if you listen to his conversation with his friend, he just says like, yeah, some stupid bitch from school is who we got. And him saying, like, trust me, like, you want to tell her the exact same thing and tell her what happens, because if not, she, boom, she's going to be dead in a week. And she ended up not watching. She pressed play, but she covered her eyes. And she didn't look at the video at all. <laughs> so I guess you have to physically be watching the video. Just pushing play doesn't do anything. We were talking a little bit about the phone calls in the first video that... What, if you don't have a phone? Then what? Like, you don't get the call saying seven days. So then doesn't that happen? So then we figured out it's just watching the tape that curses you.
So apparently you really have to watch the tape. You can't hear the tape and not look. So she finds this loophole <laughs> and this guy ends up getting killed by Samara. And this is where it starts with the CGI. Now, when he's about to go back into the room and ask her, like, did she watch it and everything, make sure that he's good, he sees the water coming out from underneath the door, just like at the beginning of the first movie. Even the water coming out looks bad. Like, <laughs> I don't know how you can mess that up. It, it is just water being, like, poured from the other side of the door like it's not cgi water or anything but it doesn't look good it looks and it's green now for some reason but then he walks in she says she didn't look and then you see the well on the tv then starts all this stupid cgi effects that the, the videotape effect comes in the background and then like you see like, his face superimposed onto the, the well, and Samara comes out, and it, just the whole way it's done, it looks bad. It looks terrible. What an awful decision to film it like that, any of that. It does not look good. There's no tension there. It just looks stupid and really dated. So the entire intro to this movie is not good at all. This is an hour and 50-minute film, too. Just uh, throwing that out there. But then he's dead. The girl screams and she saw, I guess she saw Samara. Like, that's the only thing I can think of. And we get the title card with the ring from the well. You know, the view from the well. Now, Rachel and Aiden move to a different place. He looks a little better. But he still looks fucking dead or vampiric. Or like I always say, this kid doesn't look normal in anything that I've ever seen him in, which is a few more things than just these two ring movies. His hair's combed over. He looks a little nicer. That's <laughs> about it. He still looks deader than dead. Naomi Watts looks just like Naomi Watts. She's looking good. And after all that shit that they went through in the last movie, he still calls her Rachel. Doesn't call her mom. So we have Rachel who's working for a paper but her friend max who also works there says to her that like you sure this is the job you want like a big news day is a car wreck or a cat in a tree so she says it's fine it gives her more time to be with her son so she gets to be with aiden more now this is just where the story gets so stupid already off the bat and this is why this movie sucks so much you know i haven't said a movie sucks in a long, long while. Maybe since for uh, Jeepers Creepers 3 or something. They lived in Seattle. At dealing with the whole tape stuff in the first movie. How much time has passed? I don't think they tell you, but it doesn't look like a, too long. She moved from Seattle and uprooted their entire lives. Moved her and Aiden to wherever they are now. And she just happens to be right in the same town that this kid dies from the videotape come on man it the writing is terrible like just to set up this whole story just to get us to having samara back in aiden's life and start to like take him over is so poorly written and all of these are examples of it like it's it's not good and this is just the setup for the movie she happens to be in this town. The what you know the chances of this happening. And again, we were never a movie. I don't care. It's stupid. You could write it better. Let's also not forget that she is able to break into an ambulance at a crime scene, sneak in and open the body bag and look at the kid's face and get a stupid jump scare that's the only reason any of this is happening for this jump scare for samara to come out of the body bag grab her hand and said i found you uh, then rachel says we only made one copy oh god oh god is right man help then she goes to the police station and she's able to walk up to the girl emily from the beginning who saw the kid from hopefully final destination three get killed now, this is 
can't be already deemed just a suicide. Like, this has to be a homicide investigation. This kid was killed. She's just able to walk up to the eyewitness to a possible homicide and talk to her. And <laughs> this, there's going to be a lot of this. And this is why I made a poll. So if you pick the ring too, this is for you guys. And it's all on you. But she's trying to get information out of her and saying, like, you can tell me what happened. Like, she should have said, like, point blank. Listen, I know what's going on. I've been through this before. Talk to me, honey. Boom. Get your answer. She don't think to say anything like that. She's just like, talk to me, talk to me. And she doesn't really get anything. So she goes back to the house, which, again, was a crime scene just an hour, <laughs> hour or two ago. Look at that. She didn't even have to break in the house. She assumed that there would be one of those fake rocks <laughs> with a key inside of it. And just so be it, there was a rock <laughs> with a key inside. So she was able to get in without breaking and entering. Good for you, Rachel. She goes inside, she notices the water, and she ends up taking the tape, the copy there, and she wants to burn it. Why she thinks she can do this? I mean, she said that she only made one copy, so obviously that's hinting that this is a different tape. That still came from the mountain, you know, cabin area where the well is. <laughs> that the video from the first movie came from. So the whole point that it's even here is, is insanely ridiculous. But since it's a different tape, she thinks that she can destroy it, I guess, and take that one out of the equation. So that way she's thinking, oh shit, there's multiple of these going around. Like maybe it could just be my copy that has to go around and that's what she's doing, I guess. But the way the VHS tape comes apart in the fire and like shrieks like it has a mouth that's so stupid too so then we cut to aiden who is having a nightmare or a vision whatever because he starts going through a whole bunch of that that he sees the tv turn on it's all staticky samar is pissing all over the place the water's coming in at every angle and he ends up getting pulled by samar into the tv and again the effects look terrible like, really, really bad. And then he just wakes up. And he's screaming, Rachel, again, no mom. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, you'd think the whole thing in the first movie would bring them a lot closer together. It seems like it did a little bit. But you'd think he'd throw a mom in there every now and then. <laughs> he doesn't. Still Rachel. So she comes up, and when asked what happened, he says, I don't remember. And just turns into a completely different person. <laughs> His attitude switches completely because now that vision or whatever, it actually happened or he's like possessed by Samara. But the reason this movie is so bad, not it, one of, <laughs> there's many reasons. Just knowing how amazingly done Ringu is, the original, and how excellently done and adapted for American audiences the ring from 2002 was it didn't have any of this stupidity it didn't have any of this bad effects and, and and cgi or anything like it had its fair share of cgi with samara and stuff but it looked good in the first one here it looks it just looks really dated and just terrible and we're not even at the worst parts of it yet with the deer and and worse <laughs> like later on aiden and rachel go to like a farmer's market you know flea market that has some rides and stuff and they're looking around she is fixated on a tape in a whole bunch of vhs tape section that she thinks might be another one like what every time she sees a blank vhs tape now she's gonna think it's one of the curse videotapes i don't know and then aiden sees two deer beautiful deer real deer not computer generated they look so nice, so beautiful, and he has some type of communication with them, or they they have an agreement, <laughs> they have an understanding, the deer, and Samara almost taking over Aiden. And then he goes to the bathroom, and he sees a fly come out of the, the sink faucet, which, at this point, I'm starting to think the fly, like what it represents, was it like Samara's friend down there for seven days before she died, when she was trapped in the well? 
I, that's what I'm starting to think. Maybe there was just a lone fly that was trapped down there with her, and that was her only friend before she passed away in the well. We get a shot in the mirror that Aiden's looking in the mirror, and Samara is way behind him in the reflection. That looks great. Like that, look, it's a creepy shot. Samara looks good. It's just you know an actress in makeup and stuff standing there. No need for CGI. It looks pretty creepy. Good job. She finds him in the bathroom, and he's freezing. Like, I forget when they take his temperature in a little bit. But I'm pretty sure it goes down to, like, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Get this kid to a goddamn hospital, man. Like, <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole nother thing that we have coming. But he doesn't remember anything what happened in the bathroom. Uh, then we get the deer scene. They're talking... And a deer comes out of nowhere on the road. So they swerve around it, and Aiden's saying, drive. Like, don't stop the car. Just drive, drive, drive. He's freaking out. She's just looking at the deer. Uh, Then the deer turns around and comes and crashes through the window, Rachel's side. Then another one comes and crashes through Aiden's side. Then another one comes from dead on through the windshield and hits the windshield. Then they're all coming out and they're all looking at the vehicle. They look so bad. Like, this <laughs> this scene with the deer here might be one of the most embarrassing uses of CGI in a mainstream, keyword, a mainstream horror film in the whole 2000s. Like, I'll start that argument now. This is so terrible looking. And 2005, over a decade before this, you had me believe in dinosaurs were real on the screen. That looked more realistic than these deer. This is so bad, this scene. It, like, you heard the Razzie Awards when there was the worst this, the worst this in horror? The worst use of CGI, man, in in the 2000s in a horror movie that I can think of off the top of my head. And a pointless scene, too. Like, yeah, we get it. The the animals are picking up on Samara's presence that she's starting to take over Aiden. You didn't need it in this movie. And at an hour and 50 minutes, you damn well didn't need it. You could have taken this scene right out. Soon as they saw how terrible it looked when they put the scene together in post-production. Yeah, so Aiden's temperature is 93.9 Fahrenheit. Get this kid to a hospital, like, immediately. And she doesn't. Like, she makes a call and says her son's very sick, and then she notices that the fish are dead. That's a cool touch. (laughs) Having the fish dead, there's no water in the fish tank. The fish are just dead. So Samara somehow killed the fish it doesn't have to make sense but it's a cool shot yeah like she calls a doctor or like the hospital or something but she says like she'll wait for she'll hold on the phone for a call nurse the fact she doesn't pick him up in her arms race to her car and race to the emergency room is just beyond belief like i will not believe that that is so terribly written like like everything in this movie and then we get another cool scene when so Like all movies, most of them, like I always say, I can pull some silver linings out. There are some creepy scenes in this movie. When Rachel goes upstairs and the windows open, and again, the the reaction, the (laughs) underreaction, just, oh, honey, this shouldn't be open. No shit, he's got 93.9 temperature, and whatever. But she looks in the corner and she sees Samara scraping against the wall and you see her like her finger marks or claw marks and stuff at the wall and she's wet from the well and again practical makeup looks great looks creepy the way that she's moving is very unsettling great job Uh, then it turns into aiden and aiden's the one who's scraping up against the wall Uh, then the tree from the first movie at uh, Shelter Mountain, the big, like, fire-looking tree, when the sun hits it, starts etching itself throughout the room. That looks all right. It doesn't look terrible. Some of the better CGI in the movie, I'll tell you that. Not only does she not race him to the hospital, after the tree grows in the room, where she takes him is her office, her job, at the paper, and sits with him on the couch in her office. 
Like, why? And Rachel's asking Aiden, like, if you know why she's here and trying to hurt us, like, let, tell me. Like, is it because of what I did? And she's referring to trying to, when she burnt the tape. So, did trying to stop this curse make Samara pissed off and she's coming after Aiden? That's what it seems like. He tells her that she can only hear them when they're awake. When they're asleep, she can't hear them. So, they can talk to each other in their sleep. Which is just a whole nother thing. Like, why go in this direction? I don't know. <laughs> There's nothing to do with the tape. Any of this. So, take me out of my Mothman journey for this fucking movie. But as always, it's a fun watch. Just for tearing apart how terrible this is. She asks her friend Max at work for help. And he asks, like, is, he, is the kid sick? And she says... Yeah, kind of really undermines, like, the severity of it to him, but ends up going to his house, and he's got the water pressure and everything because the power got turned out at their house by Samara, I guess. And this is another thing I just thought of here on the spot. It's like Rachel forgot everything she investigated in the first movie. She was a smart character in the first movie. She was putting together the whole story of and backstory of what happened to Samara, looking into her parents, found out that, about the well, that she was down there for seven days, that this bitch hates water, is the number one thing she should know. And she doesn't immediately put two and two together, that like the kid doesn't want to get in the bathtub, he doesn't want to get in water. She doesn't think, oh, like it, that's just like S Samara. She didn't want to get in water. Maybe she's possessing my son. She doesn't think of any of this. Like, her character is, is purposely written as an idiot in this movie. And it just takes away so much from the first original remake. And then she goes back to her place to grab some things. And she sees the pictures that Aiden was snapping in the bathroom at the farmer's market thing. And sees Samara get closer and closer behind him with every shot. That's cool. Like, cool little scene there. Now, this is another reason that I'm talking so much about the CGI in this film. Because there are some scenes that it's used pretty damn well. And this one is one of them. When Rachel comes back to Max's place, and he's missing, and she comes into the bathroom where all the water's pouring through the door and stuff, she opens up. And all the water from the bathtub is going upwards to the ceiling. Now, does it look phenomenal? No, but it looks pretty damn good. And there's no other way you're doing a scene like that <laughs> without CGI. And it looks really good. The water's dripping upwards and stuff, and then you see Samara's hands, like, gripping Aiden, and she looks into his eyes, and they're possessed. So she realizes that, finally, she's taken over Aiden's body. And then all the water proceeds to freeze and then just drop down to the floor. Max is alive. He's cool. But that's very well done. It looks good. And it's a good scene. So when you have something like that, and then you have a scene with the deer. It's just like, what happened? <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. It has some good CGI in this movie. But most of it is just so bad that it, it takes me instantly out of every single scene. Yeah, now he's in the hospital. And the doctor said his, he was 90 degrees, his temperature, when he was brought in. 90 degrees. This, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. At this point, though, we get a whole exposition scene when uh, Rachel shows Max the pictures on the camera of Samara behind Aiden and tells every, tells him everything about the videotape and Samara and her backstory and all that. And this woman's already at a hospital, mind you, <laughs> with her son with 90 degree temperature. The fact she's not committed right here and there is, is beyond insane too. So then she's allowed right back in with her kid. <laughs> And she grabs Aiden's arm, and she gets basically what is this movie's version of the videotape from the first movie. Like, it's just a bunch of images. Looks, it could very well have just been a second tape <laughs> that she watches. But this is Samara, I guess, or Aiden through Samara. 
showing her a bunch of images that shouldn't mean anything or help her with anything, because none of this relates to Aiden at all or his current situation. So Rachel tries finding out more about the biological parents of Samara, because the Morgans adopted her. And all she can get is confirmation that she was adopted, this woman can't tell her anything more than that, and who the actual parents were. So Rachel goes back to the horse ranch that the Morgans lived on, and it's being sold, this guy saying that people just moved, the realtor, and she finds out that there's a basement there. And we get a little shot of the where the mirror used to be. Cool. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching for anything to be cool here. Oh, and of course, that for the second movie here, when the, there needs to be a basement <laughs> in this farmhouse that, pe- that the Morgans left stuff behind in, then of course there, there's a basement. <laughs> they left just the right stuff behind to give her clues to try to save her son. And it's basically everything to do with Samara. <laughs> And the Morgans and the backstory she's looking for, that's in this basement. It couldn't have just been they left behind a few couches and a drawer full of hats and crotchless panties. Like, they perfectly left behind everything she needs. This is a decent scene when Aiden is visited by the psychiatrist. And he keeps calling Rachel mom and mommy. So, you know, this is Samara talking through him. And he keeps asking, I want to, saying, I want to go home, I want to go home. And she says, you're not well enough. So he says, then I have something to show you. And presumably, like how she's described in the first movie, that she was able to burn images and stuff into people's heads, including her mom's. She does the same to the doctor. And the doctor reaches over three, four feet from where a child patient is, mind you, to open an unlocked drawer and take out a huge hypodermic needle with what looks like morphine vials on the side. None of this is locked up or anything. But she, whatever. She she takes it, plunges it, and just injects herself full of air. Kills herself. At this point, I'm, at least something happened. Like, let's... This is... We still got 45 minutes left. Oh, this is so... This is so hard. She finds out about Samara's birth mother, Evelyn... And that she grew up in a convent and she got knocked up, whatever. She had the baby, Samara. And then she tried drowning her baby. And all the other sisters and the nuns and stuff came up. No, Evelyn, no! And they stopped her from doing it. So this adds even more backstory to Samara. Why she doesn't like water so much. It's not from the well. I mean, I'm sure that didn't help. (laughs) Like in the seven days leading up to her dying. But... This goes way back. Uh, then she goes and she meets Evelyn. And isn't she played by Sissy Spacek or something like that? I'll find out in a second, but I'm pretty sure I remember that. She goes to the mental institution to meet Evelyn. And the guard is saying that, like, something wrong with your kid? And she says, yeah, and why? She's like, everyone who comes, that's the reason. And then she recognizes a song that Ev- Evelyn down the hall is uh, humming. And she says, I recognize that song. He says, yeah, they all do. So how many times has Samara possessed children and stuff around? That's just uh, whatever. (laughs) And she just tells her, be a good mother, listen to your child. So when your child says, drown me, motherfucker, (laughs) listen to that kid. Max shows up back at his house. Aiden's there. Rachel's gone, like just in the first movie, never with her kid. And he tries taking uh, Aiden's picture. And he says, fine, I promise I won't take it. And he sets it to auto take a picture. And then she comes inside, and it's dark, and there's cartoons playing. The mood is very, the mood's decent. Because Aiden presumably just came back from the hospital on his own. How'd he get there? (laughs) Doesn't matter. At this point, whatever. He took, a winged creature came, picked him up, and dropped him off. And then she sees him, says, shouldn't you be at the hospital? (laughs) She doesn't know. She doesn't get any phone calls from the hospital she, saying your son's missing, that the nurse is dead. That none of this happens. None of this occurs. And she notices Max is missing. So she goes outside. For some reason, <laughs> she goes outside. And she looks in his truck. And he's leaned over the steering wheel. And this woman just doesn't realize when people are dead, man. Same with Noah in the first movie. She's got to, like, creepily walk up to it, touch it, move the body so the head goes back. And then we get the cool twisty face, which looks cool here, too. And Aiden and Rachel talk in a dream because he's saying that 
she, Samara makes him sleep all the time now. So she's like fully in control now. And he says that show her that she can't stay. That if you kill me or try to kill me, she's not going to stay. So then we get near the end here. I'll tell you one thing. For all knowing that these ghosts are in a lot of these movies, they never know when the protagonist drugs their food or water. They never they never catch that shit, but they know stuff going on all over the place. He's eating his sandwich next to Rachel. He's saying, you got me to protect you now. Honestly, I prefer Aiden possessed by Samara. I think he's cool. He's a much cooler cat than he is without Samara inside him. When he's passed out, she goes, drowns him in the tub, and cool, like, this CGI ain't bad either. Cool shot of her, Samara, coming straight up out of the tub. That looks cool. Then you see a shot of her, like, with her human face at CGI, and that doesn't look cool. <laughs> that doesn't look good at all. And then there's no bath water in the tub, and Aiden is just lying there. He comes back to consciousness, and he calls her Rachel. So, we know it's Aiden. That's, like, the thing that'll always give away Aiden's identity. If he says Rachel, you know that's your son. And so the whole ending to this, the whole point of this, is you can just shake the shit out of a ghost and try to drown it, and they'll leave your kid. That, that simple, huh? Like, <laughs> this movie, man. But of course that's not the end. And she's on the TV some more, and she comes crawling over, and it, all this doesn't look good either. And Rachel says that she just wants a mom, so she offers herself instead of her son and she gets pulled into the tv and down the well so this is the second time she's down a well now rachel and then we get another great shot with um samara coming out of the water her hands comes out and there's fucking hair and stuff and then the hairs in her face and looks great and then she starts like abnormally climbing the well chasing after rachel who's also climbing out of the well it looks cool though and then we get a stupid line like, I've said this a few times on the channel. Like, what the, take this, you mother... F and, like, something like that for the final line for the bad guy. She's climbing up the well. Mommy! And she says, I'm not your fucking mommy. And she slams the, uh... First of all, in the first movie, <laughs> this lid was closed on the well. So her whole line here of saying that it's always open, and that's why she's always able to influence people and to, for the curse to go around is bullshit. The, the, the well was completely closed in the first movie and after she falls down it it closes again. Uh, then she gets she comes out and it closed again. So this thing's been closed. It's not always been open. So this is all just made up for the end of this movie and it makes no sense. <sighs> so Rachel shows up to the cliff but she's like in the TV still, don't forget, because there's all this happened when she was pulled into the TV by Samara. So she walks up to the cliff where we saw Anna Morgan jump off of in the tape and in the first movie. And she jumps off. She wakes up in her living room with Aiden and all is well <laughs> in Tinseltown. So all in all, and it blows my mind that Hideo Nakata, who directed Ringu, directed this. Like, there must have been so much bullshit from the studios thrown into this film. I've never read up on it or anything. I don't care to. But a fun rewatch. Murderous. Brutal to get through. Like, this was hard, guys. This was a very hard watch. Like, it's just not good. There's a few things that I point out. A few shots. A few scenes that are creepy. That are cool. Aside from that. Oh, this is one of the worst sequels, like, of the 2000s. Horror sequels, like, in my opinion, for sure. Like, I'd have to think of others, but maybe I'll do a list of the worst horror sequels of the 2000s. But this is definitely near the top. Like, such an unnecessary sequel. Again, I don't know if this ties into one of the sequels in the Ringu universe. I think it does, but I'm pretty sure it's much better than this. Like, God, it has to be. So, all right, rings tomorrow. I'll have rings out tomorrow. And 
I'm actually looking forward to that more than this. Because I remember, it's not great at all, but I remember liking it more than this one. So, all right, guys, I'll have that out tomorrow. And more shit on the Mothman of Point Pleasant sometime in the next day or two. Have a good night, guys. <laughs> That's like the foolproof plan. Foolproof thing if you want to... Fuck me. <laughs> Evelyn. And she was like... Uh, and... Evelyn. <laughs> Good for her, Rachel. This movie sucks. That's why. <laughs> but... What? <laughs> this is an hour and 50 long... 50 minute... This is an hour and 50 minute... <laughs> what? Mm.